So with this study, we are trying to individualize therapy for rheumatoid arthritis. And um, one of the main problems that we've had um, is that uh, we, it's hard to choose the right drug for the right person. So uh, we've been fortunate in that there have been a number of new drugs developed for rheumatoid arthritis in the last 10 years. Um, but each of them works for some people and not for others. And so this is a, a current challenge in the clinic, is how to choose the right therapy for the right person to get off on the right foot. Um, and it's, it's not trivial because the disease uh, causes damage in the joints and if it takes a year or two to find the right treatment, then damage can accrue in that time period. So um, that's the point of this study is to try to address this issue of how do you choose the right treatment for the right person. Uh, and with the study, we tried to look at markers in the immune system that might help. The marker we studied in, the, in this study is a type 1 interferon, which is a um, protein made by the immune system, and it's an antiviral protein, uh, but it's also produced in different types of inflammation. And so we think that this uh, particular protein is probably regulated by tumor necrosis factor alpha as well, which is the molecule that's inhibited by the TNF blockers. Uh, so there was some rationale in choosing this particular molecule. Uh, we were wondering if this pathway was turned on in particular people. It may be that the TNF inhibiting medicines wouldn't work so well, and that was the sort of hypothesis that started this, uh, studying this particular molecule. The cost of the treatment is a, a major issue, and um, uh, the drugs have been used fairly commonly now in rheumatoid arthritis, and so this is a, an issue for uh, insurance companies and uh, healthcare payers uh, because you know, giving these medicines to a lot of people and having only some of them respond is not very efficient. Uh, and you'd really like to use those healthcare dollars in the most efficient way possible. So I think that that's a benefit and that's another reason, you know, the, the patient needs come first, but a secondary benefit would be that we would probably be able to create some healthcare savings if we could avoid giving the drugs to the patients in whom it won't work and then focus hopefully other therapies on those patients. And, and so I think we really could increase efficiency in that way.